Today we're talking about categorical variables or in R we call them factors and factors have levels and those levels can be changed. We're going to talk about how to organize and rearrange them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't go away. My name is Greg Martin. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. To deal with factors in R, we're going to use a package called 4Cats. 4Cats is amazing. You're going to love it. It's absolutely incredible. Now, there are a number of circumstances under which you might want to reorder or change the levels of a factor. You might change them manually. You might change them based on a value. You might change them based on the average value of another variable. You can lump them together. You can reverse them. You can collapse them. All sorts of things you can do. Let's get into this. Giddy up. Now, just a few things before we carry on. When I work in R, I always use the tidyverse. The tidyverse is actually a collection of packages. If you haven't installed it, you do need to. You call it using the command or the function library. I also we're going to use four cats today, so call, you install four cats if you haven't. And when you install four cats, you don't four cats. You don't just get the additional functionality, the additional vocabulary, the functions. You also get some additional data. That data is automatically installed on your computer. You have access to that data, and that's the data I'm going to use in this tutorial. So you can actually. Do what I'm doing on the screen. You can do that at home. You can replicate everything I'm doing. Try and get the same results. It's the best way to learn. That's what I recommend. And then finally, I've got here Patchwork. That's just a way, I'll show you what Patchwork does. It's just a way that you can uh, use, you can use it for data visualization. And, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. You don't have to have that. Okay, let's start taking a look at what we've got. Oh, and by the way, you'll notice that I always use this kind of kind of zoomed in, this big text on the screen. That's so that you can watch these videos on your cell phone if you want to, on your mobile device. Right, four cats, right? If you push uh, command enter hit and you run that line of data, you get here at the bottom on the right, you're going to get all of the documentation around this particular package, right? Uh, I said to you, and if you push data, open and close brackets, I will give you all of the databases that are that are already installed in your computer and you can use these to practice. But you'll notice if you go down, 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 it'll tell you that 4Cats, uh, let me see if I can find it. 4Cats is giving you an additional data set, here we go, called GSS Cat, right? And this has got lots of categorical variables. It's a great package, it's a, it's a great data set to use to practice with categorical variables or factors. So if we push view with a capital V, GSS cat, control enter, and here is the data set. And as I said, this is on your computer once you've installed 4Cats and you can practice with this. It's lovely because there's lots of categorical variables. So you can practice anything that you want to do with categorical variables. This is a great data set for that. Um, that's looking at it just at the data. But if we go back here, we can also, uh, let me just type in here, if we do glimpse, GSS cat we can look at that data set down here in the console and you can see that many of the variables are in fact factors right marital status is a factor race is a, is a factor uh, religion is a factor and we're going to look at all three of those today I just want to illustrate some of the circumstances under which you might want to change the levels of a factor. So here, for example, and this is where, by the way, I, I, talked, I talked about patchwork. It allows me to put more than one graph in a particular graphic. That's just so that you know. And uh, here we've got an example of, it, this is the same data just represented twice. At the top, right, uh, we've, got, we've got this categorical variable called mar marital status and never married, separated, divorced, widowed, married, right? And they're just kind of in whatever order they were, you know, that, that it originate, was in the original data set. Here I've got the same categorical data, the same factor, but the levels have been changed and the levels have now been ordered in a way that they correspond with the count of each of the categories themselves. Okay, so that's one example of where you might want to change the levels of a categorical variable or a factor. Let's look at another example. Here is another type of example of where you might want to change the factor level, right, based on some sort of criteria, right? Now here we've got religion. Uh, this is the religion of all of the people in the States, and this is the average time spent watching TV. The graph at the top doesn't tell you, nothing jumps off the screen at you. You don't see anything meaningful straight away. The graph at the bottom is a little bit different. Here we've got the, the religion, so this factor here, this categorical variable, has been ordered, right, based on the average time spent watching TV. In other words, the bottom one is the, is the least and the top one, 
is, is, is the most time spent watching TV and everything else is something in between. Very interesting. So we're basically creating a factor level based on the average value in another variable. Very interesting. And we're going to learn how to do that in this video. And here's another example. If you look at this top graph over here, right? Uh, basically, this is marital status over time. And you can see, well, as you get older, the number of people who are never married drops. The number of people who are married obviously goes up and then that starts to come down. And the number of people who became widowed goes up. Look and, and, and look at the, at the legend on the right-hand side over here. That legend is ordered in whatever order the factors were, were in previously. So this is the as is, the original state of the data set. And it doesn't really matter, but the top legend label uh, is at the top, but it corresponds to uh, the red line, which is right at the bottom. In terms, it just doesn't match up very nicely. Compare that to the bottom graph. At the bottom graph here, we've got widowed, red, right? It's the top label, and it corresponds to the, the graph ending at the top. The, and then married is the middle one, and it corresponds to the graph ending in the middle. And never married, blue, at the bottom of the legend corresponding to never married, which is at the bottom of where these graphs ended. In other words, this factor level is ordered based on the end value or the highest value corresponding to the highest value of the, of, of the Y coordinate based on the largest possible X coordinate. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we're not gonna redo the glimpse. We've done that already. Unique is a lovely, function, right? Unique, if you put a vector inside unique, so if you push GSS cat race for race, which we think there's black, white, and maybe some other races in there, uh, it's a vector that'll come out of that data set. It's one variable. And if we push control enter, we can see that it's got white, black, other. And then, so those are the, those are the unique values that are found in that, in that particular vector or in that variable. It then goes on to tell us about the levels. And it says the levels that it's got, it's got it's got other, it's got black, it's got white, and this is the order that 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 the, the that it considers these things to be in. And then it's got not applicable. That's interesting. Okay, and we're going to see why that's interesting in just a minute. But unique is a great way just to get a quick sense of what the, what the, what the possible values in that particular variable are. Now, the reason why I said it's important that this is a vector, right? I like when I'm doing this kind of thing, when I'm using any of these functions, I like to use them in the context of the tidyverse. In the tidyverse, what I like to do is I start with the data frame and then I use this pipe operator, which basically means and then. And it takes whatever is on the left-hand side of that pipe operator and pipes it in as the first argument in the next function. So this is GSS cat and then pop that into this right here. So pull race basically means it's going to pull the race variable out as, and now this is important, as a vector. So it's going to output it just as a vector, which is just like a long, long, long line of, of data points, as opposed to if we didn't put this pull race there, it would pipe the next line into the next, uh, the, the, the next function as a data frame. And we don't want that. The unique the unique function wants to see a vector. It doesn't want to see a data frame, okay? This is important, and you'll see why, why it's important in a minute, right? So we've got GSS, pipe that into pull race. It pulls out just that vector, right? The race vector, that's the, that variable. Pipes it into the next line, which is unique, and we don't have to put anything in, in between the brackets because it always pipes. Whatever, whatever you're piping in goes in as the first argument in the next line of code. And you basically get the same things. This this little bit of code here is the same as that up there. It's the same thing. It looks a little bit more, it looks like it's a bit more, but actually you'll see why in a little while, why that's quite a useful way of doing this, right? Similarly, okay, we can do count. So if I push count and he, now this is a little different. Notice here for unique, I said uh, GSS cat dollar sign race and I got that vector and, 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 and applied the, the function. With count, it's a little bit different. With count, I say count, and then the first argument is the data frame. The second argument is which vector, and then I've said sort, right? So if I say count, what we have down here, we've got white, black, and other, and you'll notice it says nothing about the levels now. It has sorted them, okay, kind of from biggest to smallest. Okay, now if we do the same thing, I mean, that's just telling us what's, what's in there. We do the same thing, GSS cat. Because this count function likes to receive a data frame, uh, we can pipe it in. 
right? So we say we don't need that pull function. So we say GSS cat, pipe that straight in. The first argument is GSS cat because it's been piped in. And then the second argument is simply race. We can put in sort equals true or not, it doesn't matter. And there you've got it. This time we didn't sort it and you can see it, just put it in the order that, uh, that the factors exist in. Okay, interesting. A super quick interruption to this video to say thanks to Nested Knowledge. Nested Knowledge sponsor this channel and I absolutely love them. Nested Knowledge is an online platform that you can use to do literature review and systematic lit review. And what I love about this platform is that I'm using it for the entire process, beginning to end, all the way from search, screening, tagging, extraction, all the way through to actually writing the manuscript, creating a living document online. And I've got my entire team using it, so we collaborate, different people doing different parts of the process. I used to hate lit review, now I love it. If you want to love lit review, check out Nested Knowledge, click on the link in the description below. And without further ado, on with the video. Okay, so we can take GSS cat, right? We can pop that in to pull, just to pull out just the race variable, pipe that into levels, and down here we're gonna see what those levels are, other black, white, and not applicable. Interesting, let's do the same thing with a table function. Now, the table function doesn't want, and I, I, I'm teaching you stuff that's not about levels here, this is a little bit about how to work with the tidyverse, but it's important. The table function down here, it doesn't, want to, it doesn't want to receive just a vector. It wants to receive a data frame, right? In this case, we're gonna give it a data frame with just one variable, but it wants a data frame. So that's why we say GSS cat and then select just one variable. We could put in more than one, we could put two or whatever, but just one variable, pipe that into table. And now here's a little table uh, and this has got other black, white, and here we've got not applicable and zero. That's interesting. Here's a level that's got absolutely no observations. We might not want that level. Aha, so we're getting somewhere. We've got something we need to do here. Let's take a look at what and how. And this is where we start using the functions from four cats, right? Okay, so we've got GSS cat. We wanna get rid of a factor, a factor level that's not being used at all, fine. We say mutate. The variable that we want to change is race. So we say race is equal to, here's the function, factor drop. And factor drop from, which variable? Race. And then pull out race, ask for levels again, and let's see what that does. Boom shakalaka, it's just got three levels. Right, now let's talk about how to order a factor level by the value of another numeric variable. Okay, so let's say we want, I'm going to run this line of code, and we're going to just get this graph up. Okay, so let's run that line of code, bada bing. Okay, here is uh, religion, and it's in no particular order. Okay, this is the order that it the data set comes in, and this is average TV watching time, right? So religion versus average TV watching time. We might want to order religion by the average TV watching time to see that relationship. Okay, how do we do that? Let's go through this code, right? So, and then we'll talk specifically about how the four cats functions work in this, in, in this context. We're starting off with our data frame. We pipe that into drop NA from TV hours. That's just to kind of simplify things. We don't want missing values. Then there isn't a, 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 a mean TV time variable, by the way. If we look at, just to have a look at this, We've got TV hours, but not average TV hours, right? And, and we've got religion and TV hours, but we want the average TV hours per religion, right? So we wanna create something that'll do that for us, right? So we group the data by religion and then we summarize it. And we, in our summary, we create a new variable called mean TV, right? That's an average TV time. And it's gonna be done by religion because we've grouped by religion and that, Value will always be the mean TV hours, and then we're gonna pipe that into ggplot. If I put in here, um, and then view, just pop view in there, control enter, you can see it's got, it's created basically a data frame that has all of the religions and, and basically a new variable called mean TV and the average TV per religion, right? Got it? Okay, let's keep going. Let's remove view. And let's, we pipe that into ggplot, right? You know that with ggplot, usually your first argument would be the data frame. You don't need that because you're piping it straight in here. Aesthetics, we want our x axis to be the mean TV time. That's the new variable we just created. There it is down there on the bottom on the right. Y axis is gonna be religion. Uh, geom point means we wanna create a dot wherever these things meet up. And I've said size four so you can see it easily. And that's gonna draw the graph that we can see here on the right hand side. Okay, 
how do we change this so that what's getting piped into ggplot changes the factor levels so that they are a function of the mean TV, the factor levels of religion, so that they are a function of the mean TV uh, mean TV watching time. Okay, let's go down a little bit. I've got the exact same code, but I've got one extra line now. Look at this. Exact same, drop, uh, drop NAs, group by, summarize, blah, blah, blah. Hang on, here we've got mutate, right? Mutate, I'm taking religion, right? I'm going to change it. And I'm changing it with this function here. Factor reorder. Factor reorder. What am I going to factor reorder? Well, I'm going to factor reorder the, the religion variable by the second argument by mean TV, the new thing that we created in the line above. And then pipe that into ggplot, bada bing, bada boom, control enter, and a new graph is ordered in that way. Thing of beauty, isn't it? Of course it is. Okay, giddy up. Let's keep going. Right, uh, similarly, okay, we've got, I'm gonna draw another graph over here. I'm just gonna draw that graph and what we've got here is we've got, and this is pretty simple stuff. I'm not gonna go through all of the code as to how we drew this graph. I'll go through it very briefly, but essentially the problem that we've got is we've got income on the right-hand side, but it started with the smallest income at the top and that income has been categorized. It's the, the, the levels are ordered such that the smallest income's at the top, the biggest income's at the bottom. And then we've got average age, as the x-axis, right? So we've done the same thing. We've grouped by income. We've, we've created a new variable called average age, and then we've piped that into ggplot, and it's produced the graph that we've got. Okay, I won't go through every line of code. You guys get the point. Now, how do we fix that, right? Let's go down to some code just below that, right? Everything here is the same, right? We dropped the NAs. We did a little filter there. Don't worry about that. Grouped by income, created a new variable. Hang on. Here we're doing a mutate, which means we're changing. Whenever you do mutate, you're changing a variable or you're creating a new variable some of the time. But this time we're changing a variable. So it's, it's income or our income, right? And what is it? Well, we're taking factor reverse, FCT underscore REV. And it's going to be factor reverse of that variable. And then pipe that in to ggplot. Uh, and let's push control enter and see what happens. Bada bing. Now we've got the smallest income at the bottom, the biggest income at the top, and we can see a nice relationship there. Boom, shaka, laka. Now, you might want to order a factor variable, factor level, by the frequency of the value in, in that variable. Right, pretty easy. Here, let's just do, I don't know, we don't need this there. Okay, let's look at, if we count uh, marital status, we're just doing a count of marital status, and for each of the categories of marital status, this is the count, right? And we've got, uh, we've got no answer, never married, separated, divorced, blah, 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 right? If we were to turn that into a graph, this is what it would look like. Okay, fair enough, but again, it might be useful to have them in some sort of order, right? How would we do that? Let's look at the code over here. We're popping in this mutate. Mutate means we're gonna change something. What are we changing? We can change or create something new. We're taking marital, we're gonna overwrite it with what? Factor infrequent, and this means it's going to basically order things in order of frequency and then pipe that into count and let's see what that looks like. Well, that's what it looks like down here, right? Marital at the top, uh, ba, 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 with no answer at the bottom, they're in order, right? We're gonna pop that into, uh, we might want that the other way around, right? So now we've got another We've got another feature of four cats. Here we've got, we've, 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 we've used the factor infrequent and then we've got factor reverse, just to turn that on its head. Let's look at that, and it's the other way around, as we expected, starting at the top with the smallest value, at the bottom, the biggest value, right? Let's turn that into a little graph, and boom, shakalaka, and I just added a, a, a nice theme to this. Uh, we've got the, the marital status by the, the frequency of, you know, the, the occurrences of those, those uh, categories in the data set ordered from left to right. Beautiful, thing of beauty, okay. Got it, of course you do, yippee ki -yay. Okay, you might want to manually recode a factor, okay? Pretty easy to do. Basically, we just use this function over here, factor, FCT, recode. Same story, we're using mutate. We're taking, now, in, in this case, it's the party ID, right? The aff affiliation that people have politically, okay? And on the right-hand side are all of the old factor names, and on the left-hand side, the new ones, right? So you start off with what you're wanting to create, and it is equal to whatever the old names were there. So we've got strong, like Republican strong is what we want the fact to be called going forwards. 
what it was called before is strong Republican, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Interestingly, here we've got a few categories, no answer, didn't know, other party, and we've taken all of those and we've called them the same thing, other, 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 okay, got it? Now if we say count party ID, and here are all, then basically it's just done exactly what we thought, okay, got it? Okay, and very similarly, right, there's a function called factor collapse, right? And factor collapse does the same thing. Same story, we're saying mutate party ID is equal to factor collapse. First argument is party ID. That's the variable that we're going to use, that we're going to collapse the, the, the factors. But look at this. We create new factors and we say, look, take everything, create a factor called other, and take everything here and like in, in this concatenation, no answer, don't know, other party, make them all other. Take rep for Republican and take everything in this concatenation, strong Republican, not so strong Republican, all of them just get recategorized as rep. Same with independent, same with the Democrat, right? And if we say par count party ID now, boom shakalaka, we've just got four categories and there are the counts next to that. We can also lump things together. Look at this. Okay, let's first look at if we were to take GSS cat and count religions, and I'm going to sort them as well. These are all the different religions, right? Starting the most common Protestant, then Catholic, ba 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 by the order. Might, might, maybe we want to say, look, we just want to know who's Protestant, who's Catholic, how many of each of those, and then everybody else lumped together. Okay, let's look at how to do that. GSS cat mutate religion factor lump. Factor lump, and what variable are we going to lump? Religion, fair enough. N equals two means we're going to give the values, give the count for two of them, and then everything else gets lumped, right? So then count religion, and let's have a look. Catholics, Protestants, and everything else. All the others are at, 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 the, at the very bottom. Okay, interesting stuff. Okay, next we're going to talk about how to reorder a fa factor based on a value corresponding to the largest value in another variable. Okay, so we've got marital status. Let's look at this graph and just understand what's happening here so you can understand where I'm trying to go with this. Here we've got marital status, right? And the marital status, we've got, uh, let, we've got, we've got married people, and as you get older, the, number, the proportion of people married in any population goes up. Right, so this this y axis is proportion of one of these lines, right? And the blue line in this case is married people. As you get older, more and more people have married, and then there comes a point where that starts dipping down because people are either getting divorced or they're dying, right? People never married, well, that starts off with just about everybody's never married, but then very quickly that drops off, and in your 20s and 30s, uh, the never married drops down, down, down to a very low number. And then widowed, people who lose a spouse, that goes up with time, and that goes up with time, right? So you see, you understand what this graph is, is going. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the legend over here on the right-hand side, if the top label corresponded to whatever, what, what, whichever of these things landed up with the highest proportion at the end of the ages, at the end of the age variable. So at the highest value of ages, whichever proportion was the highest was the top label. In other words, this factor, this categorical variable, marital status or marital, was ordered in a way that the, the first one corresponded with the highest proportion uh, against the highest value of age. Does that make sense? That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so let's look at how to do that. Let's first just try and understand how we drew this graph, and I'll go through that very quickly. I've just taken out, we've just done some filtering. You don't need to understand the filtering. I've just chosen to do never married, married, and widowed. There are other, there were other categories in this variable, but just to keep it simple, I said, let's just do three. Fine. We count uh, age and marital status. Fine. We group by age, and then we do a mutation because there wasn't a variable called proportion, we create a proportion which is n over the sum of n. Okay, don't worry about the mathematics of that. We're creating these proportions. So at any point in time, all of these add up to one. Okay, now here's where it starts to get interesting. Well, this is how this graph got created. We've got ggplot, age is the x variable, proportion, this new proportion that we created is a y variable, color equals marital status, and we've got these three lines, right? Uh, line size is two, and we've put a minimum as a theme that just makes it look pretty. Control enter, we'll draw the graph as you see it on the screen at the moment. Right, now let's look at the alternative, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna first draw the graph to see where we're going so you can see what we're trying to accomplish here. We've got the same graph, but what's happening now? Widowed, so 
at the end of life, the, the highest proportion of people are widowed. And that's, that's the top category. That's the first category. That's the first level of our marital status. The middle proportion of people are married. That's the middle, middle level of our, of our categorical variable, of our factor. And the lowest proportion of people are never married. And that lowest proportion then corresponds to the, the, the lowest uh, uh, label in our, in our legend, which is the lowest level in our factor or categorical variable. All right, so that's where we got to. How did we get there? Well, we did exactly the same thing. I'm not going to walk through the, all of the graph, but what we've got in the middle over here before we pipe this into ggplot is we've got two lines of code. And the one is marital. So we're going to change marital. We're changing the factor order of marital, right? The marital status. We want to change the factor order the levels in marital status. And we use factor reorder two, right? Because we talked about factor reorder. That was one of the first things we talked about right at the top. This is factor reorder two, right? The first argument is marital. That is the, the data that we're going to be changing the factor of, right? The second argument is age. That's the variable for which the highest value needs to correspond to how we're going to how we're going to order these variables and the proportion that is the thing that that will actually determine what order our factor levels landing. So you've got three arguments here: marital, that's the variable we want; age, the va the variable for who's for, from whom you're going to take the highest value, and proportion is the y-axis uh, that you're going to use to actually create the order. Right now, that actually kind of creates it backwards. So we do the next line, which is marital equals factor reverse of marital, and then pipe that in, and uh, the same story size to bada -ba 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 bing minimum, and that creates this graph as you see it right over here. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do the best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.